This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Ho Jeff. Save 25% with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 511. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. 511, bitches. That's Blake. And I'm Brian. Hey! Welcome, everybody. We're back in the studios this week, in the fine, fine Bob Studios. Welcome to l- new listeners. Uh, don't take next last week. Last week's episode was a anomaly. Last week's episode was great. It was. We it were was at the... Shorter than usual. Yes. Uh, but this is more, well, I don't know if this is a normal episode because, Brian, what's happened this week with the uh, outline that we have? So, uh, the uh, the outline is AI generated this week. Yes. Yes. Um, the chat GPT is coming for my job. It is. <laughs> uh, so, things are going to be in a little bit different order. Um, I so, was confused. It is. Um, so... AI did this, ChatGPT, thanks to Brad of the Cinema Guys. Artificial intelligence. Yes. Uh, You know, everybody knows who Brad was. He was at the Cincinnati Comic Expo. He was. There you go. There's Brad. Um, You know. Yes. I'm still, the jury is still out. I'm pretty sure he says, hi, I'm Brad. Oh, I think he does. Hi, I'm Brad. No, well, we we just listened to it. Yeah, Yeah. do it again. One more time. You want, oh, no, I got to go back. Okay. All right. I'm Brad. Hi, I'm, I'm Brad. Justin. No, he doesn't. There's yeah. no high in there at no. all. I don't know. Man, he had I, me going the whole weekend. He did at the expo. Hi. Uh, no. Uh, well, there's, so there's already a problem with this with artificial intelligence. What's that? Because you said this was uh, episode five one one. Yes. It says here episode five one zero. That was on incorrect. The that was incorrect. It's five eleven. That's right. So artificial intelligence already has a strike against it. Yes. Our, our updated outline has 511 on it. Yeah. Well, I printed this shit out this afternoon. When did it get changed? Uh, AI sent us a new outline this weekend. Not me. <laughs> uh, everything was the same except the 510 and 511. Uh, so AI edition of the outline, number one, introduction. This is what it says for per chat GPT. Hosts kick off the show with some witty banter and introduce the topics they are discussing. So we did the witty banter? Did we? Have we? What, wasn't that what we were talking about? Hi, Brad. Blake bitching about AI. Is that witty, witty banter? It's banter. Okay. No, if, I don't know if it's witty. Witty stuff. Yeah, we did. Oh. We did. I, I like that the uh, the topics and the witty banter is followed up by <laughs> people who have died. <laughs> Well, I think I, I think someone oh, added so that witty. as to something oh, we're talking okay. so about. I don't edited. think they Chat GPT said you're talking about these dead people. That's true. That's that was true. added later by banter. someone. Now I'm kind of it kind of puts you under pressure to come up with witty banter. I mean, now you got to like take notes. I'm like, what can I talk about that's going to be witty? What are you going to talk about that's witty? I can bring up artificial witty. I think anything I say is considered witty anyway. Organic witty. 
It's kind of different. Um, well, before we get into witty banter, can we do Breath of Silence real quick? <sighs> For who? Tim Wakefield. Knuckleballer. Yep. Boston Red Sox. Mm-hmm. 19 years he played. And Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Pirate. Pirate. Oh, yeah. Pittsburgh Pirate. Uh, passed away uh, um, due to brain cancer. Yep. So um, 57 years old. So, yeah. Kurt Schilling, you're still an asshole. Yeah, um, fuck you, Kurt Schilling. Uh, and then also. Is that witty? There you go. I got a bloody sock. It's fucking fake, you piece of shit. Anyways. Uh, is that witty? Yes. I'm no. trying to figure out where the banter is. That's just anger witty. because of Kurt Schilling. And then finally. Angry banter. Okay, I'll change that on banter. the. Uh, and then Pretty hateful banter. <laughs> Two hundred and twelve years young, Diane Feinstein, uh, uh, Congresswoman, passed away this weekend. She still plans to continue serving as uh, senator for California. She's voting next week, mm-hmm. so or somebody's voting on her behalf. Um, so yeah, so. You know, I feel like she was two hundred and twelve, but she she looked one hundred and nine. I mean, she looked really good for her age. So <laughs> good for her. Um, it was that witty? Because it didn't feel it to me. <laughs> I thought that was witty. Oh, okay. Blake thought it was. Blake Party down. That's witty. Age. There you go. Oh, witty. Oh, witty. oh okay. So, Ageism right. is witty. I, I correct. From an so, age old guy, so, that's witty. So what I've gathered is uh, witty. The definition of witty of sub- is subjective in this room. <laughs> Blake is the the barometer of witty. <laughs> Uh, Good job, Blake. I'm the turkey baster of witty. Maybe not a barometer, but maybe a turkey baster. Cobble, cobble. No, you're I'm now disturbed by that comment. (laughs) Which one? The turkey baster. Oh, okay. You're gobble, gobble. (laughs) I'm a turkey. Cobble, gobble. No. There we go. Is that better, Jeff? Brian, do we want to go down the hall? We might as well. (laughs) Uh, Moving on. So that's host kick off the show some witty banter. Somebody else died this week, too. And I can't remember. I'm sure a lot of people died this week. Well, yeah, but I thought Tom Clancy died this week, but then I realized <laughs> it was his tenth anniversary of his death. Uh, don't feel bad. Uh, I got caught. I always like when people like you put articles out there, and you're like, "Oh my yeah. god, you were like Tom Clancy dies!" It's like, holy yeah, shit! Yeah, ten years ago, like a couple years ago, a couple weeks ago, I put Cedric Benson, the ex running back, he died. Yeah, three years ago. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> wow, how'd I miss that? I just love how these things pop up. Yeah, in in our feeds, and it's like, oh man, it's like, yeah. Why is a three year old article popping up, or a ten year old article? I can barely keep up editing the ones that are current. <laughs> <laughs> I have time to go back and edit. Um, USA Today was struggling today. Could you go back and edit some of theirs? No, uh, Just make sure tomorrow's article I've papers. Sim- I've submitted final edits for the Enquirer and uh, WCPO. The- okay. Uh, no more. Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, bullshit. <laughs> Do you know they're dating? I don't give a fuck. They're dating. I don't care. But they're dating. I don't care. I'm just saying. Jeff, they're dating. I, I don't understand why that drives up ticket sales to go see a football game. I don't either. The uh, the girls 7 to 18 age bracket uh, that watched the NFL this weekend spiked by like 400%. So the NFL loves it. And oh, Travis Kelsey because his jersey sales spiked. As yeah, well. yeah. I'm like, oh, so the guy that Taylor Swift is going to write her next breakup song about is yeah. now getting jersey sales. That I don't will end up being burned and when they break up. Why and are the people? Referees bought into it too with their shitty fucking calls against the Jets. Hey, there's no hold pl- penalties. No hold. Night. No holds. Or face mask in the end zone for safeties. Yes, he's. They're fine. They're fine. Uh, my other question is. Um, with with uh, Taylor Swift, first off, I think she's the fakest thing out there. But like Travis Kelsey's podcast was number one now uh, this week because of it. And I'm like, like you said, Jeff, all she's going to do is write a bad song about or write a song about you. Why do people keep dating her? It's like Jennifer Aniston. Why are you keep dating her? Now I watch or listen to some of the the podcasts because Jason Kelsey is fun to listen. To. Jason Kelsey, yes, his brother is Travis. Uh... You know, he, he might bring up a topic that Jason can tell Travis he's wrong on, and that's kind of fun. But, I mean, all right. has they even talked about Taylor Swift on it yet? All right. Yeah, we're, we're they did have, last week, I think. Yeah. Jason, we're going to have to get Jeff or Jim mm-hmm. to start getting into her DMs Ooh. so we can spike our... Get our ratings up, yeah. We are number five in Switzerland. 
Yeah. For nope. pop culture. Still. Mm. Uh, I haven't been told since, so we're going to take it. We have a button that says it, <laughs> a magnet. English speaking. Yes. English we speaking were once and, w- once and Two years always. ago. A year ago. Um, yeah. Uh, my wife did watch the Jason Kelsey documentary on net oh yeah she said that was really fun and i've seen like bits and pieces on it i don't doubt it because he, he seems normal is a he i have he's an offensive lineman yeah, yeah. he's funny yeah he's legitimately funny yeah kelsey I, travis is, oh, just, actually we should probably wait till number three on this for pop culture picks. Oh, okay yeah yeah sorry, sorry. oh sorry oh, okay this isn't Wendy banner anymore uh, we yeah. gotta wait till okay uh we let, do let, have let me mark kelsey talk later on <laughs> We do have a Twitter poll that we can follow us at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. Please do. I'm not done introducing topics we're discussing. Hold on. We're not done yet. Uh, what is your favorite baseball film? Yeah. Uh, we are down to the finals. We started with, I don't know, 16. We're down to two. And these are not correct numbers on here. AI screwed up. Uh, it came down to a league of their own and major league. With 159% <laughs> voter turnout. That is not correct. <laughs> Which one would you pick? The one I did pick, I did pick League of Their Own. One hundred and fifty nine percent. Blake, which one would you pick? How many people voted twice? Eight hundred and twelve. <laughs> what would you pick? I'd have to go with a major league, of course. Major league. Major league won seventy two percent to twenty eight percent. Not a surprise. Uh, I did pretty well out there. So well, congratulations okay. to Major League. But where did the seventy six and eighty three come from? That's from, from the last week. That's from the previous. From AI, po- right? That's from the previous yes. polls that they won. Yeah, they, they won the previous poll to move into this week. So that's what they had the previous. AI did not update that oh, part. Okay, so when we go to box, box office News. dollars and rankings, is that AI bullshit or is that real? That's correct. Those are correct. I made sure. Are Those you are sure? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just checking. Um, the, the AI just created an outline, then the outline got filled in. Oh, I thought it was like created all this shit. Uh, also, just to let everybody know, um, real quick here, besides Hello Jeff Box, what is the, in the Hello Jeff Box this week? Uh, this week in the Hello Jeff Box, we have Misfortune Cookies by Pachekins or oh. Pachekics. Okay. Uh, we, we've got some here to share for uh, us to eat here. Okay. I like fortune cookie. This is a misfortune Fried cookie. Fried dough is good. Mm. Miss. It's misfortune as in not good fortune, exactly. but not Mrs. Fortune or Ms. Fortune. It might be Ms. Fortune. Apparently, this cookie bites back. 200 uh, calories for one. For what? Is it spicy? Did it really say 200 calories for sure one? Does. Sure does. Holy F. Oh, it's a wheat biscuit with a oh. note inside. It is black. Yes. Remove the paper from the cookie before consumption. I don't want to. Not suitable for children aged under three. Wow. The misfortunes of the cookie. Oh, that looks Probably nasty. Either. Uh, it smells good. I black. like the smell. So this is from Sister Pam. Mm. Sister Pam. Um, yeah, this is part of Pam's bribe. They yep. look like oysters. Two oyster shells joined together at the... Have you ever eaten a fortune cookie before? Yeah. Okay. But look how black these are. You should take a picture. I mean... I did. Fucking pitch black. Um, just, just let everybody know. Um, well, that is very bland for having 200 calories. Um, let's see. Not a lot there. <laughs> very bland. Yes, I was expecting it to be a little sweet if they're going to give me 200 calories. I mean, a can of Coke is only 140, and that's loaded with uh, high fructose corn syrup. My misfortune says everyone's laughing at you. These are sweeter than normal fortune cookies. Bad luck isn't all that rare. Looked in a mirror lately. Wow. Wow. Are you still waiting for nose picking to be an Olympic sport? Oh. <laughs> I might win if it did. Blake, what's yours? There's no lucky numbers on here. No. That's not what it says. It says, good night, sleep shite. (laughs) Short and sweet. Okay. But that's not a misfortune. It should be like, don't drive home tonight. That'd be a misfortune. That would be. Then I'd have to spend the night in your basement. That's fine. Sleeping is a misfortune. Um, As someone who likes sleep, yeah, that would suck. So we do have those. So thank you, Pam. We got more food next week when Jim's here. We'll get some more stuff here. Um, I oh, do. Yeah, Pam, Pam dropped off a big bag of stuff. Yes. And this is just scratching the surface. Large bribe. There was something really good we tried. Hey, wait a minute. This says 25 calories. 
I thought you said 200. Oh, the oh. entire box is 200 calories. Oh, okay. Come thank on. God. Okay. Okay. I feel better now. So only 25 calories. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. That, that's a little different. Um, well, now I can understand why it was so bad. Yeah. Okay. 25 calories. Yeah. That, that explains the taste. Correct. I still eat them. Uh, I do like the fact that they are black as my soul. Yeah. That is true. We did have something really good at the expo. We did. No fat, no sodium, a little bit of carbs, I only had, two I'm grams sure of sugar. I, I'm pretty sure I had way more fat and carbs and <laughs> sodium at the expo. <laughs> yes. No, no. We had something that one of our volunteers, Corey, brought in. He brought in some spicy pickles. The pickles. Yeah, there, there are none left in my refrigerator, and I need more. So... He does have some f- available, so this is actually real true. This is true. Corey does have uh, great homemade pickles that he makes. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many he does have left, but if you're local... Are they made out of cucumbers? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, squash. Uh, <laughs> but he has uh, available, uh, if you're local in Cincinnati area, let us know. You can DM us at Bad Ideas Podcast. <laughs> Um, on, on Twitter. Twitter. Yep. Or X. And we, uh, you can talk to us about that. Uh, but he does have them. They're $6 a jar. Uh, just to let everybody know. And they are divine. I did not have the sweet, uh, I did not have the spicy at home. I had the regular ones. And my oldest son and I pretty much went through that whole jar. It was amazing. So if you're looking. Does he do bread and butter pickles? I don't know. You can email him. He does have an email for it. Oh, okay. okay. He said you can give my email. It's C O R Y, Corey, A. Chambers, C H A M B E R S at yahoo.com. So email him and he you can work with him or you can let us know too and we'll get it to him. Uh, but they're $6 a, a jar and let me tell you, they're well, well worth it. Hey, Corey, I need some spicy and uh, regular pickles, please. I just ordered two today. <laughs> uh, they're that good. Just regular kind. Just regular kind. Now you should get the spicy. The spicy is very good too. Have jalapenos in there. Yeah. So. I didn't eat them on a sandwich, but I think those spicy ones would really make the right sandwich yep. real good. The regular ones on a sandwich were really good. And they're thick and they're good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, give Corey some love there. He's a listener and volunteered at the expo for us. Did a great job. Him and his kids did. Um, yeah. While we're talking about that. Yes. Uh, also, a uh, huge shout out. Uh, Randall Holt. Yep. Uh, Sleeveless Jones. Yep. Uh, Dr. Dana. Dr. Dana. Yep. Uh, Scab Randall. Yep. Everybody that that showed up, uh, step of the year. Yep. Uh, to Corey Brooks. Corey Brooks. Um, everybody that that came out to help us out um, to set up to set up and to help us keep everything running over the weekend for the expo. Yep. Was it was incredible. Yep. Very much appreciated. Everyone's, I'm Brad. Everyone's help. I'm Brad. Um, but no, it was a great time. Uh, the expo was a lot of fun. I'm Brad. There you go. Um, send my guys. Um, so yeah, everybody did, uh, it was a fun time. Uh, celebrities, uh, we had, I had the privilege of talking to three Arrow people. Yep. Stephen Amell, uh, Neil McDonough, uh, David Ramsey, uh, all of them top notch did very different things. And everybody was worried that, oh, what can they talk about? They did a fantastic job. Everybody did that weekend. Paul Williams. Despite um, the limitations of what they were allowed to talk about. Yeah. Yes. I mean, so some celebrities did a better job of just being able to uh, adjust the mm-hmm. question. Um, but it felt like I felt bad for Paul Bettany because we yeah. opened up the, the the questions and everybody, the questions, yeah. everybody asked a question about the MCU. And he just, like it got to the point where it's like, no, d- just ask something else. You know, yeah, you couldn't ask the questions because of the SAG after regulations cracked. and the strike. Yeah. So everybody had to be like, "What's your favorite breakfast food?" Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we go from from the MCU questions that I can't talk about, mm-hmm. and then w- from that we go to if you were a potato, how would you like to be cooked? Great question. <laughs> Great question from a fan. Great question. He does like potatoes. And, uh-huh. and what I did learn is a baked potato mm-hmm. is called a jacket potato in uh, Britain. Hmm. Jacket potato. Yeah, at least that's what Paul called it. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I believe it was the last question where the they like he couldn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, the person asking the question said, uh, do you have any friends? Perfect. <laughs> like, I mean... 
I I get it, but it's you know what? Every year we get them, and I love it. I will say overall, though, great weekend. Uh, celebrities, all of them were very nice. All yeah. of them uh, couldn't have been nicer. Yeah, yeah. We we can't talk bad about any of them behind their back or no off air. Uh, everybody even great. on air. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, um, Stephen Mel was fun. Um, I got to ask wrestling questions, so I was excited about that. Yeah. Paul Bettany did a good job of reminding us that he's married to Jennifer Connelly. Oh, yes. yeah. Cause... Several times throughout the uh, panel. Um, yeah. My question for you, Jason, uh-huh. is do you think because of your panel, Heels was canceled? I sure hope not. By stars? I sure hope not. <laughs> okay. Uh, one day after the expo ended and my moderating of his panel? Went, went live. It was yeah. all over the internet. Yeah. Your head is... Yeah is all over the internet. Yeah, yeah. I was on CBML's Instagram. Yeah. I was on comicbookmovie.com. I saw that one. Where, yeah. yeah they, they, they talked, they quoted uh, Stephen Amell from your interview. From my, yeah, it was great. Uh, and then his show got canceled. So uh, I wouldn't expect it uh, to be canceled long. Supposedly it's being looked around. Yeah. Uh, Mike O'Malley has, they, uh, I read an interview with him the other, I think it was Sunday, mm-hmm. where he said that, um, they definitely have a, a third season plan. Like, they had one planned. Mm-hmm. So this was kind of unexpected for him, but he said they've, you know, they're working it out. So. Good. So, yeah, but thank you, everybody, for coming down, saying hi. It was great seeing people. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, next year will be in October. Yeah. 19th through uh, the 21st. In Sharonville. So it won't be uh, during my uh, wedding anniversary weekend? No, you can actually be there all three days. So you I can, know. You can show up for one day. It'll this be in next year. <laughs> impressive. I mean, because, you know, my wife loves the fact that I spend my wedding weekend at the Comic Expo. Uh, You've been married how long? 19 years. Yeah, see, I've been married 16. Next it's fine. 20. They don't. So? so thank God it's in October, or else I'd be you know, up Shit's Creek again. Here's here's what you do, Blake. Bring God. her to the expo. Bring her to the expo. <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is. Buy her a meet and greet. Get a <laughs> turtle shirt. Buy yeah. her a meet and greet with her favorite celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Paul Bettany. Not. Matthew McConaughey <laughs> might be there next year. Maybe. Yeah, true. You don't know. You don't know. I would as, I would assume that the smaller venue will get larger guests next oh, year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the, they will get large. By large, you mean in size. Nathan Fillion could be there. You know, Ryan Reynolds that could be up there. Another point. Yeah. Uh, about the expo always being on mm. Blake's anniversary, but it was also Sleeveless Jones's anniversary, and he was there all three days. He was there four <laughs> days actually. Yeah, I think he came down on Thursday. Yeah. So just letting you know, uh, next year it's on my anniversary. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, number 17 next year. Are you going to have Jessica volunteer? Uh, no. Actually, I think she'll enjoy the weekend without me. Yeah, it'll probably be better for her, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to treat myself to a nice dinner. You stay down there. As long as none of your kids get sick. Ugh. You mean up there. Yeah. Not, up there. not down there anymore. Yeah, Damn no. it. No. Uh, um, because of the expo, I also started watching uh, a, a new show. Uh, hold on, it's not time for that yet. Oh, we haven't. I'm so oh, sorry, guys. Well, the, the, the outline is just throwing us off. Okay, two movie madness. Oh, I thought we were still do introducing topics that they're discussing. Oh, what are we going to talk about later? <laughs> but we don't want to do it now. Nope, too late. Two movie madness. A lively, a lively. <laughs> Discuss- <laughs> discussion about the latest movies, sharing their thoughts, reviews, and maybe even some funny ans- antidotes. Anticdotes. Whatever. An- anecdotes. Anecdotes. Um, let's see. I haven't seen well, any new movies uh-huh. theater-wise recently, but I did, for the first time, I did see Coco, the Disney Pixar movie. Oh, yeah. Movie. Did you like it? I, I enjoyed it. it. Very good. It, to me, felt like a better telling of the similar the story of the same vein as Encanto. Mm. And Coco was, came out first, so. But Coco was better. Yes, it was. But yeah, like Encanto, I guess, was Disney Animation Studios. Mm-hmm. It The whole thing was, you know, about family and, and whatnot, mm-hmm. and, and you know, oh, I don't want to be this family, I'm the outcast type thing of this family, and they learned that, oh, yeah, everybody has a... And it was like, Wow, a very similar story. I guess they were probably being made about the same time in different studios. Coco is probably one of my favorite Pixar films. And I wouldn't list it up that high. I really enjoy it. And um, the music's fun. And it's just the animation's fun. Like, I really I really enjoyed it. I didn't know they made an animated movie about Coco Beware. They did. They did. Frankie was awesome in it. 
Frank yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sorry, that but, was that was some witty banter that I'm trying to sprinkle. Uh, witty banter uh, is in the first section. Witty banter. Oh, yeah. We're in movie madness we, now. We, oh, we can't, can't, we bring can't that put on. witty banter like, elsewhere. Can't. It's only in yes. your thoughts and reviews. It may be some funny anecdotes, but no witty banter. So what's your review? Uh, my review is uh, it was fun. B minus. Put it on the put it on the poster. <laughs> you know, uh, to me, a B minus isn't a bad grade. I'm not uh, entertainment, uh, entertainment weekly. Entertainment weekly. Will, will will your review of Coco show up on? It's good. It's great. It'll make me ejaculate. No, no, no. it's on Fox this year. Uh, oh, is that uh, that's not on the outline, is it? That's, are, are that's part of, of our... the. Uh, We'll get there. Oh, that's part of the pop culture picks? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, anybody else see movies? You guys stick with the movies this week, this section. Bro, like, play any new movies? I ain't got time for movies. Okay. I ain't got time to bleed. Um, no, I mean, I didn't really watch any movies. I caught some of the replacements. I did, too? It was yep. on the other day. Fell asleep to the replacements. Uh, Great film. No, not really watching. Red either. means stop. Yeah. No, no, no new movies for me. Uh, I did see a movie, uh, Winnie the Blo- Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, the horror movie that came out last oh, year. Oh yeah, and <laughs> it's a film. It's on Peacock. Is it worth watching? You know, for it being a terrible horror film take <laughs> of Winnie the Pooh. Is sure, it, I would watch it. I would tell people to watch I mean, it. Better or worse than Zombievers? I thought Zombievers was actually more fun. Okay. Uh, Winnie the Pooh was funny because they go back to their animalistic nature of killing because Christopher Robin went off to college to be a doctor and he stopped bringing them food. So they didn't know how to hunt and they were getting hungry. (laughs) And uh, because of that, they decided to say, fuck you, Christopher Robin, become animalistic killers. Here's the best. And they stopped talking after that, too. So here's the best part, though. They're all wearing human clothes, though. If you're going back to your animalistic nature... (laughs) Why are you wearing clothes? Why not? So uh, because no one took them off. You know, you see dogs wearing human clothes. That's true. All the time. That's true. Um, it was it was weird. Um, editing was a factor in it. Um, I hear chewing. <laughs> uh, Somebody edit- decided to eat another misfortune cookie, like their misfortune wasn't bad enough. Uh, but yes, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It's on, uh, they're making a sequel. Brad from the Cinema Guys told me that uh, Tigger is in it. So be ready. Uh, the so best Tigger part is, wasn't in Blood and Honey? No, Eeyore wasn't either because they ate him. Oh. That's what started it. And then they eat the humans after they kill them. So uh, lots of, there's some nudity in it. Definitely old school. It was 87 minutes. <laughs> old school nudity? Yeah. What's that? Uh, As compared to boobs. nudity today. Yeah, boobs. Uh, the gr- the one woman is running away, and Winnie the Pooh grabs her and just rips her shirt off before he kills her. I was like, I don't think that's necessary. So Gratuitous boobage. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a film. Put it's, it on the, it's a film. Put it on the poster. Uh, so that's my movie. Okay, bl- Jeff, go ahead and get into box office news since oh, nobody else oh, watched movies. Yeah, I, I, I've got this... Ready to go. Okay, go ahead. It's time for Box Office Bombs. Yay, I did it right for once. Good job. Um, all right, well, the bombs, we will start with per411mania.com. The Expend Forbles <laughs> got, off, got off to an awful start last weekend, and this weekend it cratered. Uh-oh. Cratered? That cratered. Is, cratered. Yes. Catered. Oh! Uh, catered. There, there's two R's in that word there. <laughs> this action sequel took in $2.5 million, down a horrid 69% from its start. 69! 69. If bomb status wasn't established last weekend, it is guaranteed now. The film has just $13.3 million domestically and $36.4 million worldwide against a $100 million budget plus marketing at this point it should be or it should finish off at perhaps 20 million and hopefully according to 411 mania ends the series wow uh did you watch this Brian? i have not seen it yet uh it, i will see it at some point uh, i'm sure it'll be on paramount soon or hbo max yeah um 
Not, ex- I mean, this isn't surprising to me. Uh, I'm, it's a big budget, though. Hundred million is a lot of money for the lack of star power that mm. is in this film, opposed to the other ones. Yes, yes, that seems. And for Stallone to have a limited role in it, mm-hmm. uh, which I also f- feel like is, you know, yeah. part of. I mean, you wouldn't know that if you didn't see it. So, yeah. like, that's obviously not it. But I don't know. Um, what I, did, I didn't expect it to do this poorly, though. No. Uh, Jeff, what else happened this weekend at the box office? Uh, we've got our top five, which Ooh. Expendables is not in. No. Coming in at number one, Paw Patrol, the mighty movie. It made $23 million in its opening weekend on a $30 million budget. Go Paw Patrol. Saw X, or is that 10? And how do you pronounce that? 10. 10. It's Saw. the 10th one. Yeah, I didn't know if they were like, oh, it's 10, so we'll call it's it It's a prequel, X. though. It takes place between Saw 1 and 2. Oh. That's how they got Tobin Bell back. But it doesn't oh, have Julie Benz, who dead. was at the Comic Expo this weekend. It does not have Julie Benz in it. Oh, well, Saw 10 made $18 million in its opening weekend on a budget of $13 million. They're saying it's the best one since the first one. Ooh. It's a linear linear, linear story. Like, it doesn't bounce around on the time like the other one. So it's better than the second one? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Better than Mark Yeah, because it doesn't have Donnie Donnie Wahlberg Wahlberg. in it. It's in the safe. Uh, What else got? Uh, Coming in at number three, the creator made $14 million in its opening weekend on an $80 million budget. That's not a great Mm -mm. comeback for $80 million, but I'm trying to remember which movie this was. Uh, Oh, oh, they were saying, yeah, they were. The robots, AI. (laughs) It's the robots. I I heard great things about it, but it looks good. It's the best uh, science fiction movie since something, according to somebody Ah. on the ads. 65. (laughs) (laughs) It's the best sci-fi film since Adam Driver's 65. Uh, Somebody Somebody quoted. (laughs) Somebody. (laughs) Jeff just did. (laughs) The Nun 2, coming in at number four, made $4.7 million, a total of $77 million on a $38.5 million budget. Lots of rulers being broken on that one. Rollers? Rulers. Rulers. Oh, rulers. Okay. Yeah. Get it? Smack! Uh, yeah. The witty banner is over. Sorry, my bad. No, that wasn't witty. Sorry. I, well, it. what he thinks is Oh, uh, okay. How dare you? And at number five, The Blind. It made $4.1 million, a total of $5 million, in its opening weekend on an unknown budget. Didn't see that coming. So, four of the top five. <laughs> Where's my rim shot? That's not it. <laughs> it's not even brought up. Go ahead, hit buttons. I was Aww. trying to think of, like, window curtain jokes. Which you oh, you went, yeah, I went the other way. I went the other way. I, I appreciate a good window curtain joke. Yeah. That's a fun but one. Four of the five on their opening weekend. Mm-hmm. So all the, about? all the old movies are being swept away. Yep. What's the blind? Uh, uh, I think it's bet? about somebody who can't see. I think or, it's a uh, Hollywood. Uh, it's the oh, was it poker? Yeah, I was, yeah. I'm figuring. It's out. the um, the Duck Dynasty. Oh, it's uh, a faith base about the guy that did Duck Dynasty. Long before Phil Robertson was a reality TV star, he fell in love and started a family. But his demons threatened to tear their lives apart. Dun dun dun! This is the true story that started a dynasty. So he had to grow a beard. Yeah. Yeah. He had killed ducks. Mm-hmm. You know, he uh, um, started ahead of uh, Terry Bradshaw in uh, college football at quarterback. Did he? He did. Oh. Okay. What do we got upcoming, Jeff? Upcoming, we have, for October 6th of 2023, mm-hmm. The Exorcist colon Believer. I, I like a title that lets you know exactly what it is. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When two girls disappear into the woods and return three days later with no memory of what happened to them, the father of one girl seeks out Chris McNeil, who's been forever altered by what happened to her daughter 50 years ago. Bum, bum, bum. So it's a direct sequel to The Exorcist. This has got uh, <laughs> Ellen Burstyn, Jennifer Nettles, Leslie Odom Jr., 
The basketball player? No, that's oh. Lamar Odom. No. <laughs> oh, sorry. Leslie Odom Jr. is famous for being in Hamilton, Hamilton. Uh, amongst other things. Uh, this is so the he sings and he dances does. in this. I don't know if he does in this. I think oh. he just acts. In Why this. are you spitting vomit at me? Make it stop. Go back to hell. It tastes like pea soup. You go back to hell, you demon. You demon. You demon. Um, um, yeah, you can stop that at any point. <laughs> um, I was getting into it. I don't know. How dare you? I mean, you? is song and dance numbers in the uh, outline here? Uh, you know what? Does he wear a powdered wig in this movie? Oh, <laughs> it's an old school priest. A coat he does with not. tails. Uh, this is the first of three Exorcist films that Blumhouse is in charge of. Oh, uh, great. Three. Yeah, they're making three of these. So be ready. How many Exorcist movies are out there now? Eight. No, I don't know. I think no. four. <laughs> I think there's more than that. Really? Well, I just had it pulled up. Hang on. Well, there's The Exorcist, and then The Exorcist <laughs> Two, <laughs> and then The Exorcist Three. There's Exorcist and then the Four. Exorcist the beginning. It's easy if they just keep and numbering then, them. You know, kind of oh, like the Expendables easy, but, Four. And, well, there was and, that uh, one time where two furious. different Exorcist movies were released. Yeah, they're the, all go different ways. Though. So there's The Exorcist, Exorcist Two, The Heretic. 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 Whoa! The heretic. Um, the Exorcist 3. Mm-hmm. Then there's... Let's see. Exorcist The Beginning. Exorcist... Oh, uh, hang on. Exorcist 2. Dominion. Boogaloo. Prequel to The Exorcist. The Electric Is it Boogaloo. Dominion or Damien? It says Dominion. Okay. I, I know an O and an A. Well, I'm uh, just... Uh, I so, can't. Exorcist The Beginning... <laughs> Then there Dominion, as if, as if the Exorcist, the, the first movie wasn't the beginning. Correct, prequel to the Exorcist, the Exorcist Believer. Uh, the next one coming out in 2025 is the Exorcist Deceiver. Uh, but there was also Deceiver. the Exorcist Three Legion. Exorcist Ooh. Three Legion, yeah, not just one demon. 1990. Yeah, that's the same one. I think this is yeah. It, no. It was just subtitled and something and not subtitled and something else. And then there was the... It stars Brandon Dorf, Exorcist 3. The, uh... That, that you're listening to Stephen Dorf? Yes. Then there was the Pope's Exorcist. <gasps> the Pope's Exorcist. That does not count, though. This is in the Exorcist. Isn't the Pope's Exorcist part of the Exorcist? Uh... I am reading what's in the film I'm, lineage. I am, you're reading I, uh... Wikipedia. 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 <laughs> Wikipedia <laughs> Every anybody can change it, so that means it's always right. Oh, okay. That's what Michael Scott said. I want to see that citation. Um, My favorite Wikipedia was when they went in and changed uh, the was it the NFC Championship game is the game that uh, whoever beats uh, the Green Bay Packers gets to go face the AFC champion in the Super Bowl. Did they do that? Someone changed oh. that. Um, Look what, it up. What, I think they changed it back, but it, it's out there. Uh, one of the good things that people have asked online, what would The Exorcist 2023 be about? <laughs> they I'm should watch the film. I'm guessing someone exercising the devil out of someone else. Oh. Wait, did you say 2003 or 2023? 2023. Oh, here we go. So if you would like to watch them... In chronological order, Ooh, here I, we go. I, I would not. Exorcist, the beginning from 2005. Then well, that's, Dominion. That's obvious. <laughs> the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> then Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist in 2006. Those movies came out within a year of each yeah. other, both starring the same actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say Stellan Skarsgård. Okay. But they are two different takes. Like, they made one, and they're like, we don't like this. We're going to make a, a, a remake it. And the other people said, other people are like, well, we made this. We're going to release it. <laughs> so they made two versions of the same movie. <laughs> and released them within a year. Yeah. And then you got to watch The Exorcist from 1973. Mm. Then Exorcist 2, The Heretic from 77. Heretic. Exorcist. The Heretic. Yep. Exorcist 3 from 1990. And then The Exorcist TV show. From 2016. Oh, I forgot about the TV show. Uh, the that TV is how you're supposed to read them. Series. And then which, the Pope's Exorcist. It's a TV which, series. Which is the one that has Craig T. Nelson in it? Uh, that would be... Poltergeist? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit, my bad. <laughs> That's the one you watch at the end. Uh, what else do we got? Oh, next is number three, Pop Culture Picks. 
The hosts share their favorite pop culture moments, whether it's a new TV show, a catchy song. Well, we just had a catchy song. Oh, yeah, you did the catchy song in the wrong spot, Jason. Or a viral internet sensation. Fuck that. Uh, so, catchy song. Why are you vomiting on me? It tastes like pea soup. I'm a demon. I'm a demon, but I really am good. What is wrong with me? What I'm just wrong? misunderstood. Yes. Hey, Please. hey, he rhymed. Please. You need him to help write your songs. He can rhyme them. <laughs> uh, I need a prequel film about the, why the demon went bad. Because he's a demon? I'm so persecuted, it just makes me sad. (laughs) And then I get mad. At guys named Tad. (laughs) It's not a fad. (laughs) Hi, I'm Brad. (laughs) He's really rad. (laughs) Because I'm Brad, the demon. (laughs) I'm Brad. (laughs) I was going to hit the button, I'm like, oh, I don't have it up. If only we had room... (laughs) For a TV show, The Exorcist, the musical. The Exorcist, the musical. <laughs> Starting the cast of Hamilton. Um, what are you opening over there, Blake? I I, I can't control myself. That's what she said. It looks like some kind of Japanese uh, Oreo, Asian. Oh, good because the peach blossom Asian rice Oreo did well with green stuff, but it looks like. There's a grapefruit in it. Oh. oh, I was thinking it's, it would be like it's. mint, but I could be wrong. We can't read it because it's, it's in an Oreo thin. Some sort of Brian, make language. sure that you're not going to die from shellfish in that. I mean, it's completely. It's it's completely in. Uh, you know, I got to uh, know your numbers at work foreign. tomorrow with my. Yeah, uh, I can't tell which. There's no English on this box whatsoever. I got to get my blood drawn Oreo, tomorrow, Blake. Yeah. This is probably not great for me. Then don't eat it. I mean, we won't force you to if you've got a medical procedure coming. Uh, this up. is not pop culture moments. Uh, what are we doing here? What you mean? It's a product of China. Well, okay, so China. Oh, okay, so so world Oreos are not pop culture. No, it's a new, new, whether it's a new TV show, a catchy song, a viral internet sensation. Well, I knew we. I knew I wanted to say something about the Kelseys, but now I don't remember what it was. So there's a documentary. Go watch it well, about I'll, Jason Kelsey. No. Yeah, this may be celery on this thing here. It looks like celery, Oreo mm. with celery and pomegranate. Celery mm. for when you want to eat water with hair in it. Yeah. <laughs> I did uh, comes speak- with two packets, so I'm only going to open one. I did. I did uh, watch something this week. I finished. My son and I finished up Secret Invasion finally ah. with Samuel L. Jackson. It was fine. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Uh, so these are it was okay. Mm, yeah. These are matcha. Fig flavored Oreos. Oh, oh, that's a fig, not a pomegranate. I rather have pomegranate. Here, I'll just pass these off. I like fig. <laughs> I opened up uh, four Oh, they got oh, fig. Shit. So you don't like the fig Newtons, huh? Nah, big fig Newtons. Too dry. Newtons. Too dry. They are very thin cookies. They are a millimeter or two thin. This is probably actual recommended serving size. <laughs> Did you? <Yeah. laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. There's nothing in there. <laughs> Uh, oh wow! This is like this is like a a wafer at uh, you know the Eucharist. <laughs> <laughs> in the name, of, actually, in the, the name of the Oreo, I probably would go more often. <laughs> in the, would you like to? <laughs> that, <laughs> Oreo that's, that's why I go to church for the delicious body of Christ. <laughs> Here's the milk of Christ. <laughs> 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 the wine got the milk. milk. <laughs> the Oreo milk Whopper. of Christ. When you go to church this weekend, I want you to wafer. dip the wafer in the... <laughs> Bring your own Oreo up there. Oh. Seriously, you should take a picture of this. It's incredibly... I am thick. taking a picture of it. Would you shut up? I'm trying to do oh, my job over here. You should take a picture while we're talking. Well, I'm sorry. I can barely taste the cream. I ate the cookie and... That's all I got was the chocolate cookie flavor, which is probably good because I don't remember ever liking matcha flavored stuff. But I do like figs, so I'm. Ew. Yeah, I did see the when I went to go get some ice cream sandwiches this week. There was like a frozen matcha sandwich or matcha whatever next to him. I'm like, I ain't touching that because I know our matcha experiences were very disappointing. I don't even. It's all you taste is chocolate. Yeah. The, yep. There's not a the Oreo wafer. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I'll eat it. No. There you go. Okay. Oh, I just licked the cream by itself. Yeah. And it's not. There's really nothing there. It's it. 
what is there is not good. Yeah. Um, anybody else watch anything real quick this weekend? Uh, I did. What'd you watch? This is the part of the segment, according to AI, we do this. Um, so because of our interview at the Comic Expo with yes. Vincent D'Onofrio, yes. uh, I started watching a show that he's in uh, okay. called The Godfather of Harlem, mm-hmm. uh, starring him and uh, Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Um, it is really good. What, what's it on? Uh, it's on Epics. Mm-hmm. But it but you can watch it on Hulu. Okay. Um it's like the it's like set in like the fifties during like the civil rights and movement, mm-hmm. but it's based on um like the mafia. Uh and so Forrest Whitaker plays uh Bumpy Johnson, uh who was, you know, prominent back then, so it's kind of like a true story, like, you know, based on true events yeah. kind of uh it's very, very good. Okay. Okay. Highly recommend it. I didn't realize that he was actually in that show. Like mm-hmm. I remember seeing, you know, commercials or whatever, and it was always like Forrest Whitaker. But I never saw anything with D'Onofrio in it. Okay, and uh, Chaz Palmieri, something like that. He's also in it. Um, uh, there's a few other known actors. In it. How many seasons? Um, I want to say three. Okay, and then, but he was what he was saying at the expo was that that hopefully a fourth is coming. Okay, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize. That's when I kind of realized that he was in it. Um, but I'm he's a good storyteller too. At his painting, yeah, he was incredible and s- could not have been a nicer guy. Yeah, uh, Crumholtz was a good storyteller at the comic. David Crumholtz, yep. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that was probably the highlight of my expo. Walking, walking into one panel, hearing um, one actor telling a fart story, <laughs> leaving the, that panel, going into <laughs> another panel, hearing them that that uh, celebrity tell a fart story. Mm-hmm. Two different fart stories, yeah. two different celebrities, yep. same time. Panels at the same time. Yep. Um, I am five episodes into Ahsoka. I'm two minutes into Ahsoka. Really enjoy it. I'm enjoying it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think Hera, the green girl in it, she looks like bad cosplay. That's one thing that's annoying me with it. <laughs> like, she just, it, I don't know what they did, but it wasn't good. Is that the one where they made the meme where she's got, like, these World War One goggles? Yes. Yes. And she flies a spaceship? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but even, like, later in the, the series, Blake... There's like people, the villains are, or the uh, Empire is flying like World War yeah. One spaceships. That's what it looks like. Really? Yeah. Ooh, World War One spaceships. Maybe two. What's with all the uh, extra stuff in the back of her head? Is there like brains in that stuff? Or is I don't like know. A tail? I don't know. I need the anatomical. Structure. I would think it's an effort to put a hat on it, too, though, wouldn't you think? Yeah, it would be. Pretty tough. Yeah. Um,. I'm sure they are either very experienced with putting hats on, oh, yeah. or their hats are easier to put on than they look. They have probably a quick release. Is that good for walking balances? Like if you have more than two, one tail coming out of the back. I would think of your so. Head? It's like a whisker. It's like whiskers, right? It's a giant cone, <laughs> yes, it's floppy it's cone out like of the back whiskers. of your head. It's just like whiskers, Brian. Shut up. Or a pair of. Is that for like balance? Like you know? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Side? Yeah, I have no idea. I- I'm going to say yes. Um, but it's enjoyable. I really liked it so far. So uh, I'm going to finish that up hopefully this weekend. But yeah. And you like green checks. I do. I do like green checks in it. That's why um, you like Guardians of the Galaxy. I did start mm-hmm. Quantum Leap on the new series. Mm. It's not bad. You leapt into that? Well, I, I was did. to bring that up later in the episode. Well, this is the part you watch TV show. You talk yeah, TV Bob show. Yeah, Bob Giselle. TV show. I, right. I looked ahead at the listener feedback, which is coming up at the towards the end of the episode as opposed to the beginning of the episode, stupid AI. Is that real listener feedback or <laughs> AI-generated Real feedback? listener feedback. Okay, so we can move into the next one if we have nothing else. Jason, what else did you watch? Jeff, did you watch anything? 
Jeff? Uh, let's see. What Besides Coco. Yeah, that, that was, was in the movies. The movie section. We're on TV section now. I've been watching uh, season three of Only Murders in the Building. They just uh, renewed. Yeah, just got picked up season for season four. four. Which, which surprised me because I was pretty sure Steve Martin said he was done after three. Yeah, we talked about that. They backed a truck of money up to my driveway. I'm only human. Is that what he said? No, that's Krusty the Clown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Steve Martin might not be in it. I don't know. He could be I, killed. I didn't see any details in regards to season four. It just said it was renewed for a season. Season yeah. finales tonight. Yeah, I'm missing it. Or tomorrow, I think. Oh, no, it's season tonight. finale? Yeah, I, I, mean, I thought they had two more episodes, but no. Maybe, oh, well. maybe they'll get Chevy Chase. No. It's you know, he did Chevy say Chase. community wasn't funny enough for him. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we need the three amigos. Yeah. Part two. We have the three amigos. It's just we've got a better amigo with uh, Selena Gomez. Yeah. I'm just offering up my uh, my pop culture picks. Okay. My, my pop culture pick would be adding Chevy Chase to <laughs> Holy Murders in the Great job, Season Brian. Four. Maybe he'll be the one killed in the first episode. Uh, Blake, did you watch anything? Yeah, so you're still doing Welcome to Wrexham? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, I did watch the first five episodes of that. Yes. Did you see the, the funny one where Sean goes on vacation with the directors? <laughs> yes. And at first they go to him where he's on the phone talking, and I'm like, <gasps> damn, Sean's fucking buff, and he's wearing <laughs> ducky Speedos. And then they say, yo, we weren't allowed to have cameras on his vacation, so <laughs> Don't all, all those were reenactments. With yeah. the, I have not seen that one. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny, because at first I was like, holy shit, Sean is buff, because you look at him. And, yeah. Like, They're just doing reenactments, so they hired a, uh, a buff <laughs> actor to a walk buff, around shirtless the whole time. A bald bodybuilder <laughs> in ducky Speedos yeah. and, a, and a hot uh, hot swimsuit model <laughs> for the walk. And, so, and when they first cut to it, I'm like, Jesus, Sean is buff. Holy crap. And then I'm like, wait a minute. That's not him. <laughs> Wrexham continues to be a great show. Great. You know great what, I, what I like about it is the fact that every episode, they have, they do a very good job into tying into some kind of uh, emotional, heartfelt tie-in or star, story or some yeah. kind of emotional story hook That'll get in it, and they'll talk about it. And like, and, and one of the things, of course, was of course Sean's vacation in Tenerife and, and the reenactments with the uh, bodybuilder and the hot model wife. Mm-hmm. But um, what I also did enjoy about it is the fact that they still touch on that humane factor. And one of the things was talking about, despite the fact that they're were reaching out to other fan clubs of like other soccer. Uh, clubs that are in this league, mm-hmm. you know, say, hey, you guys want to be on this? And they show like responses to the tests, like shoved up your arse, you know, <laughs> you know, from whatever. Do they do interview other fans wearing the jerseys? Like, yeah, you know what? We understand what they're doing. They're money. There's a couple other clubs that are doing the same thing. Yeah. And they're like, and ultimately, despite the competitive fuck you, at the end, there is a still, hey, we wish them good luck because, like, hey, you want out of this league. We want out of this yeah. league. We all want out. So we understand what you're doing, all that kind of fun stuff. So one of the things I always like about it, other than being funny, is they always got that emotional hook where they tie you in, whether it's the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, disability, you know, the uh, autism accessibility one. fans, the yep. autism, you know, and the good local stories and their heartfelt stuff. So they always hook you in with those emotional pull-ins, too. The documentary crew is fantastic on it. They are. They're, they're yeah. actually doing a very good job. It's it's it, it'd be interested to know what others they've actually done. Mm-hmm. Like now what I other would probably documentary? Be interested to go watch? Yeah. something that they've done. I did like the the one episode where they were talking about how after the first season, everybody now wants to you know be part of it, and they're coming up and they're interviewing the guy who runs the uh, pub attached to the stadium, and it's like people knocking on the door in the middle of the interview it's like we're, we're kind of closed we're, we're still doing the documentary yeah, those, were, those were americans by the way yes hey, close, we're open. Yeah. but what happened to the dvd guy oh apparently he still has plenty of dvds available to sell i want to know what happened to him i would like everybody to go there because they showed a lot of tourism skyrocketing yes Rexham too because of that and for the games and so they interview everybody from you know from Asia, Europe, mm-hmm. North America that are going there. And, you know, everybody should stop by there and buy a DVD from the guy. I would too. I agree. Yeah. I did like. Um, so we're going to destroy the back end of the stadium because we feel pretty confident we're getting twenty five million pounds to uh, you know 
yeah. to uh, to rebuild the stadium, uh, the government said no. Yeah. I don't think they were incredibly con- overconfident, but they just said if we need want it to get be Correct. ready, we have to tear it down now. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it'll be delayed. But now they have to find the funds to to, to build do. it back. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds is going to have to do like. Another movie. Well, he sold his companies for like two billion bucks. Yeah. I mean, he probably had to sell the company. He to only the got demolition. He only got four hundred million out of that deal. Oh, after tax. After yeah. which one? Uh, we talked Mint Mobile. Mint. Mint. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How much did he get for Aviation Gin? He hasn't sold that one yet. I thought he did. Did he? I'm pretty sure he's still spokesman for him, but okay. I don't think he. And he maybe he sold it for a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. I want one of those jackets though. Those are nice jackets. I, I liked the commercials he was doing for yes. Aviation Gin. I don't know if you saw them, Brian. I, I'm i pretty sure I did. It's like, oh, well, how do I celebrate a win, a Wrexham win? It's with Aviation American Gin. <laughs> and then it starts up again. How do I get over a, law, a Wrexham loss and the television is broken and burning? <laughs> <sighs> it's with Aviation American Gin. <laughs> Uh, anything else before we gin, go on? Gin is actually pretty good to uh, pedal over there in the UK. They do because they actually gin. drink it. Yeah, exactly. I don't know anybody that purposely drinks gin here in the US. I do not. Everybody will whatever. Even if it's a gin drink, they'll do the vodka version of it. Um. Okay. They, they'll actually unless order a martini Snoop, and unless, get mad if you put gin in it. Unless you're listening to Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice. So, but I don't know Snoop Dogg. I've never met him. You haven't? No. Oh, Brian and I hang out with him all the time. Probably when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, a lot. Snoop's a big Frogger fan. He's a big, uh, good master detective guy. Who's in charge? Clue? No, 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 of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Dungeon master? Yeah, that's it. Ma- he's, master he's a good detective. master and commander. <laughs> he's a master and commander. Yeah, we do Who's master Paul and commander. Bettany was in, by the way. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, anything else? Okay. We're going to move on to number four, current events. Oh, yeah. Or as we like to call it, uh, previous to this outline, News of the Geek. Yes. Oh, uh, should I play the... Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm a little slow here. I... Yes, you are. Shut it. Still waiting. It's time for another installment of the News of the Geek. Per the Guardian.com, where Blake gets all of his news from, Highlander is one of those movies that feels like it could only have been made in the 80s or early 90s. Hey, it, as you continue reading, mm-hmm. I've got a lot of beef with the person yeah. that used the words to write this story and descriptions of. But anyways, I'll, yes. I'll let you go. So Brian's not editing the Guardian. No, so. it's not quite a 70s fancy flick, and it lacks the polish and a company vape vapidity. That, tar- that tarnished so many Hollywood efforts in later decades. It is memorable these days, mainly uh, mainly for Christopher Lambert's comical attempt at a Scottish accent as anti-hero Connor McCloud. Connor McCloud. 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 Not to mention Sean Connery's complete failures to even attempt pulling off a Spanish one as fellow immortal Juan Sanchez Villabobos. Villabobos <laughs> Ramirez. <laughs> Villabobos. <laughs> Villabobos. I didn't even try on that one. Uh, and of course, there's Clancy Brown's irresistible gothic performance as Batty the Kurgan, a brutal behemoth who somehow appears to be at least nine feet tall on screen, even though the American actor is only six foot two. Yeah. Like uh, six foot two isn't taller than like f- this five foot four Christopher Lambert. Yeah, see, I mean, <laughs> already this first paragraph is written by somebody who thinks they're fucking witty, correct? And super intelligent, correct? And wants to try and prove it to you with the way they write. And, and fail miserably. And fail, yes. Uh, and they, they know going. if they would have listened, Witty Banter is back up in the first. Yeah, Witty Banter is up in the intro, <laughs> so they failed on that. But anyways, per the, the shitty Guardian author who calls I, himself— I was reading this article, and it was, it's it, a shitty article. It is a shitty article. Keep going. Nobody would call Russell McConney's— Okay. What? <laughs> what? There's not even an in, in there. Yeah, there is. No, there's not. The C. <laughs> film, a good movie, but it's surely one of the greatest so bad it's good films of all time. What is he talking about? I have no idea. It is a great movie. It won the Oscar for, for best, best film ever. Best film ever. The world, well, it wasn't made during wait my a, lifetime, wait a so second. therefore it's horrible. Wait a second. From the world, from baffling out what? Wait a second. Yeah. What is what is happening here with my outline? <laughs> 
uh, you have a fifty like, percent indent. It looks like that quadrant of your <laughs> paper like... got uh, covered up. I think AI is trying to kill you, Brian. Artificial intelligence, my ass. <laughs> I'll just read it. Uh, now, John Wick director Chad Stahovsky is working on a reboot. Mm, on the no, one, no, you, you gotta finish. You just, you oh, I'm sorry. The, the <laughs> sorry, shitty, you have to finish the shitty paragraph. <laughs> okay, sorry. The world of the immortals, from the baffling but tremendously exciting quickening to the very fact that they have to chop each other's heads off until only one remains, retains gloriously undeniable comic book silliness. Oh, wow, this is terrible. There's some silliness in this house. This is artist writing is terrible. Now, John Wick director Chad Stahovsky. Is we're going to reboot. On the one hand, modern Hollywood has the tools to smooth off those unfortunate 80s edges. On the other, the idea of a de-cheesed, perfectly coherent, and thematically consistent take on Highlander may not be that attractive. Did this guy ever watch uh, the television show? Jesus. Hi. Moreover, there are umpteen terrifying examples already in the bag as to why these kinds of movies should never be allowed to get a remake treatment remember hollywood's attempts to bring total recall and robocop back to the multi the remake of total recall was better than the original both original movies were admittedly less unwieldy and clunky than highlander but there are parallels in the pervading sense of comic book burlesque shut the fuck up the remakes were more polished and effective than the originals the remakes probably feel featured better acting than the originals the remakes had colin farrell and joel kinnaman Serious thespians, while the originals had Arnold Schwarzenegger and Peter Weller. How dare he? <laughs> Peter Weller? Not a thespian? I guess. Hardly per- perennial Oscar nominees. <laughs> Yet, everyone who has seen both films, the new and old, have left the screening for the remakes feeling as if every ounce of joy had been ruthlessly drained from their aching, bloodless bodies. Um, wow, I wonder what that means for me, because like I said, I think the, the remake of Total Recall was better than the original. Never saw it. Stahovsky, who hopes the new Highlander will be the start of a franchise. Oh, fuck. Here we go. Here we go. I need the Highlander well, universe. Highlander shouldn't have really been a franchise because any movie after the original was terrible. Has already spotted the main issue with the 1986 original potential for sequels. Quote, I think we have some very good elements now, he told the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast. Who the fuck is that? This is uh, Stahovsky ha- saying. No, I'm talking about Happy Sad. Oh, uh, no, they took, our, they took our... Uh, it's a podcast that they named Happy Sad Confused. I don't like it. Uh, the trick is when you have the tagline, there can only be one. You just can't kill everybody the first time. Which was but, a but, problem with the sequels. Although there was no problem with that, except you had to force sequels into it. Was it. A, it was a great concept for the original movie. Instead, the first film will incorporate elements of the 1992 TV series. Quote, oh, boy. Let's pick something that failed. We're trying to do a bit of a prequel. Failed? It was on for like six years. Yeah, I never watched it. I watched so it. So it failed it. because Blake never watched it. <laughs> That's right. We're trying to do a bit of a prequel. Oh, jeez. A setup of the gathering, to the gathering, so we have room to grow the property, a.k.a. we can make sequels. We can try to make as many as possible. Yeah. <laughs> now, the problem with uh, the... 92 television show Mm -hmm. was if the show is called Highlander, it's got to focus on the Scottish guy. Mm -hmm. Connor McLeod? Well, it didn't focus on Connor McLeod because. It focused on his brother or something like weird. It focused on a relative. His uh, uncle, his nephew, uh, like uh, cousin. Third cousin? So, some cousin down there. He, he wasn't as old as Connor McLeod, but. But he didn't make it for the first gathering. Oh, no, this actually took place before he the, missed the oh, train. Movie. This, oh, is okay. kind of, this was a prequel show, too. I see. That's why I never watched the show. But it, Anyways, it was right. Duncan McLeod. Seems likely, then, we'll have to wait several movies to even find out who ends up the last man standing. Connor McLeod. Connor Jesus McLeod. Christ, I can tell you right now. <laughs> Which puts even more pressure on episode one to find other points of interest. <laughs> A tough call when your entire franchise is basically about waiting to discover the identity of the last guy not to have their head chopped off. <laughs> Jeff just told you. I'm about to say, you learn that in the first shot of the movie. I'm Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod. He's going to be the one, the hero. He's going to be the one that lives. God. Guardian is awesome, it's, too. It's not that difficult. I mean... So this but is I, I thought you're, this was going to be like uh, looped into the the rumor that he was going to try and get Henry Cavill oh, involved in this from The Witcher. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. did someone share that? I guess that what, Henry Cavill wasn't he also was tied Superman. To it? He was Superman. Mm. That did not last. Mm. The Rock killed him. <laughs> what do you mean that did not last? He played Superman in what four, four movies? Yeah, I was going to say four. Not or good five. films though. That's subjective again <laughs> to you. <laughs> well. 
And to me, they yeah weren't good Take that. films. Well, as, as long as Henry, I've never seen any of them, so it doesn't matter to me. You know, if you know if Henry's an avid fan of the of the Highlander franchise and is as avid about that as he was the Witcher series, eh, he should only, be able to do it for a couple got, years. Yeah, he's only got hope that the uh, writers are like, yeah, we really hate this content, so we're just going to write around. <laughs> uh, so it's Henry, the Witcher, so, yeah, we know. So Henry, Highlander one, okay. Uh, we what cut ha- your head off. What happens if instead of there only can be one, we can say there only can be ten? Can we do that? <laughs> there can be only ten. Give me the prize. What is the prize? We don't know until you win the prize. Um. So, moving on from I my think, new home. But what kind of music are they going to have? Queen did all techno. The, the songs uh, and stuff in the, the Highlands. Taylor Swift. Pretty cool. Yeah. Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. T- Taylor Swift rejoined Travis Queen Kelsey. song. Hamilton. <laughs> why am I? Why is my head off? Why is my head off? Oh my god! I don't think you can sing while your head is off. Oh Even, yeah, can you? You're still alive for a while. You're not though. Oh wait a minute. I, I watched Highlander. Henry Conville comes in. I can only be the one. I am the one. So, Though so much pressure. So what you're saying is Alexander yeah. Hamilton and Raymond Burr were both Highlander, and that was. Did you say a Raymond Hi- Burr? Raymond Burr. I'm sorry, <laughs> Aaron Burr. <laughs> no, no. They Keep with Raymond were, Burr. Go actually, with it. They were actually, uh, yeah, Raymond Burr. <laughs> yeah, they were actually uh, Highlander candidates. Is basically what we're learning. And Alexander Hamilton lost his head, obviously, after he got shot. Is it true, Hamilton? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Burr. <laughs> that Give you are prize. immortal and can only die from decapitation. Yeah. <laughs> prize is the American treasury, U.S. treasury. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage comes in. Where is it? Uh, anyways, per comicbookmovie.com, where Jason is now a part of, when Sony Pictures revealed plans for... Just your head. Yes. For El Morato. <laughs> See El how Muerto? I tied that into El Highlander? El Muerto. Just your head. El Morato movie. No. <laughs> Muerto. El Morato. Muer- nope. Movie during its 2020 CinemaCon presentation, the vast majority of fans were left scratching their heads. For a starter, he's an incre- incredibly obscure character. Way down the list of Spider-Man adjacent heroes and villain comic book readers want to see on the screen. Well, I don't even know who he is, and I read comics. Well, for if comic book people, years. I mean, if comic book fans are saying no, it's got to be no. Swiley believes Sony gave popular rapper and aspiring actor Bad Bunny and his, wrestler, yes, apparently. His pick of characters from their Spider-Man universe, and he decided to say, I'll take him, El Muerto. Muerto. El Muerto. Muerto. Given his love of pro wrestling, that's not overly surprising, especially as he's impressed in a WWE ring. A few months ago, it was confirmed that El Muerto had lost its January 12th, 2024 release date. (gasps) The news didn't come as a huge surprise as there hadn't been any movement on the project for some time. Now, though, we can see it. We can say, uh, de- definitively say the movie has been scrapped. Oh, so why are we talking about this? Oh, no, this is the best part. Oh, okay. In Vanity Fair profile, Bad Bunny, who's joined by his publicist. Oh, say that. Say that name. Say that Sojali name. Sojali Sola. <laughs> okay, you say it. I, I don't get paid to, to read these articles. Oh, okay. Was asked what happened to El Morato. Sojali Sola. There you go. Widely thought to be his dream role, you think he had plenty to say. Not so. Quote, he hesitates. An awkward silence ripples across the table. The site's piece reads, next question. No, bad, sur- bunny, bad Bunny probably goes, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, then his publicist says, next question. Uh, uh, uh. uh Martina, or Bad Bunny, then says, I don't know what to say. Calling uh, the issue uh, delicate. Uh. I mean, that's what he sings. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. uh. That's right. Meanwhile, the publicist sharpens point. Obviously, it's out, she says of the film. <laughs> I like how the publicist is like, nah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Wiley thought it'd be his dream role. You think he had plenty to say. He hesitates. Awkward silence ripples across the table. Sight piece reads. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. As Sola, uh, who seated Jason, I, I don't know what to say. And it's delicate. And she says, well, obviously, it's out. Uh, there yeah. you go. What a great fucking interview. There Moving forward, it sounds like the Bullet Train actor plans to move away from action-packed blockbusters. Oh, good. Quote, as a movie consumer myself, I am not one to watch a lot of action movies. I even say it's my least favorite genre, Bad Bunny admits. I would really like to play other things, like a bit more drama, romance, too. Or comedy. Or maybe a history movie with a little action. Or any other movie <laughs> but action. What about a melodrama? You think he can do a melodrama? <sighs> I got a lot to say there. Yes. Yeah. So. I mean, he was actually really good in Bullet Train. 
to be honest. I actually don't mind Bad Bunny. But I just think it's funny. I'll do everything but action. Uh, Jonas Kwan <laughs> has been tapped well, to direct the movie. Yes, that's what I said. To direct no. the movie based on a screenplay by Gareth Dunnett Alacor. Okay, this is just a fuck you AI. Alcocer. Sony has yet to confirm there will no longer be a, a move. They will no longer move forward with the project. It's hard to imagine them wanting to know to go now that Bad Bunny is no longer active on it. Yes, so there you go. Um, next number five. Listener feedback. Listener questions. Listener questions dash listener feedback. Uh, Go ahead. From Doug. Has Hobie ever endorsed a candidate for political office? Meghan Markle may be considering a run at Senate seat in the next election. Time to get on board. I actually would endorse Meghan Markle as long as Jason doesn't do his impression. I would not do that. (laughs) Jim Justice. We, we endorsed Jim Justice. You endorsed Jim Justice. I don't know if I endorsed him. I just gave him a, a platform. You got guns. We you got know, them. You can do a Meghan Markle and Jim Justice debate. How about if they're running partners for president? Uh, oh, I like who, Who's the president? Who's vice president? Jim Justice. President. Oh, well, Meghan Markle. I want President Meghan. I'm president. No, I'm president. Welcome. You got guns? You got black lung? Call me. 1-800-JIM-JUSTICE. I may be president, but I got time to try your case. Call me. 555-5555. I'm president, but I still got time to handle your case. Yeah, that's what I just said. said. (laughs) 555-P-A-R-D-O-N. You're not president. I'm president. President Meghan Markle. Boom, boom. (laughs) You got suits? I got them. Wow. You got suits. <laughs> I got, got them. them. Let me just put that on here. I have briefcases of random dollar amounts. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I did not know that until we were watching uh, some trivia uh, game show. Mm-hmm. She always held the same number briefcase, I guess. On Deal or No Deal? On Deal or No Deal. Oh, yeah. It's like the question was like, "Oh, who held the number twenty four briefcase for so many seasons?" I'm like, "They actually held the same one every time." I didn't notice that. And the producers are pissed off at one of the ladies. You're never getting the million dollar case. Ha ha ha! <laughs> they kept giving her the fifty dollar case. <laughs> fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. No so, deal. No deal. Four. That's on Game Show Network at noon every day, and somehow it always ends up on my TV. <laughs> and it's amazing to just see how much. Like one person last week was had one hundred seventy seven thousand dollars, and they I think only had like one big number left and like a couple small ones. And she decided, nope, I'm just going to keep going. She ended up with like five hundred bucks. And it's like. What the hell? 177000 is life-changing money. Especially, know the odds. Yeah, and that's the issue. Is like I think she had like a one in six chance that she'll get a million. Which, yeah. well, I'm about to say, uh, you offer me six digits, I'm walking away without thinking anymore. <laughs> Be the first offer. <laughs> How he goes, well, you've knocked out all the small ones, uh, Jeff. Uh, welcome to round two. Yeah. Uh, we have an offer of 101000 Done. We didn't even introduce your family or who you brought with us. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You're giving me $100,000. Uh, on the other side, the one lady uh, today, she took $211,000, and she, you know how they do the hypothetical, like what yeah. would you have picked? Oh, then what would you have picked? Then what would you have picked? Yeah, it got up to $666,000. And her sister was on stage, and she's like, are you kidding me? And the husband's like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, you still walk fine. away. We got $211,000. Yeah, and that's a whole lot of hypotheticals. Say yeah. $666,000 and 666. 660000 oh. Sorry. Yeah. Because it, it, it didn't just six hundred and sixty six dollars and sixty six cents. Yes. Um, another guy got forty thousand dollars, and they they got a pony for his daughter. Like they brought out a pony. Like if you take the forty thousand dollars off. Doug? Her... <laughs> Wait, Doug. Doug never told me he was on deal or no deal. <laughs> he was. They gave him a pony, not a horse. Hmm. He could buy a lot of ponies for forty. That's so right. That why Doug is asking about Megan Markle because he met her on deal, deal or no deal. deal? Well, there you go, Doug. We're gonna we're on board. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Uh, from Kali dot uh, from uh, Kali dot dehumanization four slash Harlan at Kali Goth. Where's rhubarb? Please tell me that you know what movie I'm talking about. I do not know what movie you're talking about. 
Um, it's a I very know the, uh, don't mess with another man's rhubarb. I know that quote. That's Batman. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know that quote. I'm just going to completely guess. Not Go for it. Blind. I'm going to say Tombstone. Sure. I'm your Huckleberry. Oh, wait. Can we... Huckleberry? It's not Huckleberry. even... I can't even find it. I don't know, Callie. What is, where is it? Google it. I did! Uh, now, I'm not sure. Is there supposed to be like a... Parent? This is all that was written. Yeah, I didn't know. Is there, is there supposed to be a... Uh, the, the, what do you call that? Uh, the, that mark? Apostrophe? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, like, I thought there? it was like a wear rhubarb. I'm like, what kind yeah. of wear, what kind of lycanthrope That's, is this? Because yeah, it's yeah, W E R E. So I'm thinking, <laughs> it's a wear. I think, I'm thinking it's a rhubarb. A There's a that, TV show called Rhubarb on Apple TV. A human that turns into a rhubarb in the full moon. <laughs> There's a 1951 film called Rhubarb. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's actually. Uh, type in film quotes. I did. It's, it's not coming up. Quote. Where's rhubarb? Probably. All right. All right, Brian, found something? Uh, let's see here. I would have found it by now, but I left my phone in my car. Oh. Um, in background. Oh. In mm. There's a couple scenes in 30 Rock where they say rhubarb, rhubarb, peas, and carrots. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, I, I feel we're letting uh, Callie down. We are. Um, go ahead, Blake, while Brian looks that up. Yeah, Keep from a Genie of Hobie, I'm huh. so glad my television show made the lineup this fall. Hashtag get Genie a dick. Date. I mean, date. Sorry. <laughs> date. Uh, we won't go through all of them, uh, but just that's no, a good segue. We, we have to, the second oh. part of, we didn't announce the second part of our lineup yet. Okay. Sorry. I thought that's what he's getting ready to do. No, he said, I'm just going to do part of it. Oh. Uh, Wednesday on doing? NBC is Dick Wolf Day. <laughs> CBS has Jason Brain, Soil Brand. What? Soil Brand. Tehran? Testin? Testament? I don't know what that says. <laughs> uh, also, the time. You're writing. The time machine with Guy Ferrari. 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 Yeah, for, Ferrari. No, Ferrari. No, no, that's next. Guy Ferrari is next. Oh, oh Fieri. Yeah. ABC has the good old days. Uh,. When Life Gives You Lemon at 8.30 is When Life Gives You Lemons, Tucker Up. Uh, the Mask Forger at 9. Hot Bowler. Hot Bowler, hot bowler Guy with DJ Qualls at 10. Uh, Fox has The Alaska Kid with Blake. <laughs> Adventures of Popcorn Man. Ass Hats. Yes, and at that. 10, I Wiz. Uh, Thursday, NBC has Different Haircuts with Jane Lynch. Different Hair with Jane Curtin at, ni- at 8.30. The Weasley family at 9. Do you think uh, drugs are there at 9.30? That's a good game show. Do you think drugs are there? Uh, Should we check there? Is that where the drugs are? And at 10 to 10.30 is my favorite lol. (laughs) Uh, CBS at 8 o'clock on Thursdays has Dan, then Dan 2.0, five depressing dudes, 9.30 is T-Model, and Uh, 10 to 10.30 is getting guys on. (laughs) <laughs> um, ABC on Thursdays has Arrowstone <laughs> at, from 8 to 9. From 9 to 10 is Egyptian Vampires. And then from 10 to 11, Modoc. That's a fun hour-long show there. Egyptian Vampires. And then Fox on Thursday, they bring it. Legal Custodians. Oh, yes. yes. Cannibal, cannibalism is okay with Army Hammer. <laughs> Less than Tony. <laughs> with Tony Danza? Yep. Italian red meat, and then Blake's favorite show, Indiana Jones and the Quest for Free Birth Control. <laughs> and finally, Friday night, because Saturday night's just for movies and college football. Friday on NBC at 8, bolted in. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit for the summer. It's impersonal. <laughs> Brian, oh. why couldn't they get out? They were bolted <laughs> in. <laughs> Literally. Uh-huh. I was so distraught last week at Trivia. Mm-hmm. They asked the name of the company, and we couldn't remember Ocean Gate. Oh, no. I couldn't either. I just kept yeah. remembering Bolted In. And that it was the <laughs> whale's fault, wasn't it? The orca, yeah. Yeah, the orca's yep. fault. Uh, and they <laughs> they had the wrong wrench. 
<laughs> they had the wrong. They, they didn't have the right socket. <laughs> they, they had the standard measurement. It was not metric. The, not metric. Uh, after bolted in, <laughs> that's a great comedy. You have Blossom, uh, Jeff on a pole, nailed it poles. <laughs> nailed it poles. Yeah, P O O L S and Bigly oh, Bob. Poles. Bigly Bob at ten. Bigly Bob. Uh, CBS has running through the sprinkler from eight to ten. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, 8 to 9.30. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just people running through a sprinkle. 9.30, 11 is birdbath. Bird, yes. <laughs> it's just a birdbath. Oh, that was like three hours worth of Running through a sprinkler and bird. Yeah. Uh, ABC on at 8 o'clock has Panda Farm. Fully flooded. Uh, 9 to 10 is Frollo Friday. And Frollo. Frollo. And, nine, and 10 to 11 is Walter Grogan's. Walter Grogan? Nope. Oh. Grogan. <laughs> Walter Grogan? And finally, this ends it. Fox has, at 8 o'clock, screwing it to death. <laughs> Not so easy. Uh, 9 to 10 is Sword of Sharara. Sharer. Sword of Shannara? Yeah, there you go. And from 10 to 11 is 2083. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but there you go. That's uh, Yellowstone in the future. Oh, that's right. So that is your fall lineup. Get ready. All right. The first half we released the uh, last uh, episode. To be fair, the writers are back. They're ready. Yeah. The, like edit. We, we had them all lined up, ready to go. Yep. All you got to do is write scripts for those yep. shows. Uh, what else you got, Blake, from Prof- uh, Little Richard? Little Richard 205 at Not That Richard. <laughs> Genie. Sadly, the television series Riverdale ended last month. What other television series are you still surprised is on the air? Grey's Anatomy. Uh, that's where I was going to say uh, Quantum Leap. The new one? <laughs> the new- I was surprised. I thought it got canceled. Oh, it didn't. I know. That and uh, Magnum P.I. That did get canceled. It but picked up again by yeah. a different network. Oh, that's right. I'm about to and say. I, think I, it, I looked when I saw this question. I looked to see what the the networks were actually showing. Mm-hmm. CBS canceled it, and then NBC picked it up. Oh, is that I what, believe okay. that's what it was. I saw it was coming out, and I'm like, I thought that was canceled too. Grey's Anatomy. She's not even on the show anymore. No, but there are other Grey's. Oh. Uh, what else you got? Um. NCIS would mirror maybe like this one of the CSI like NCIS is still on NCIS is still on the wow. original yeah 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 I saw uh, when I was looking they actually are going to be releasing NCIS Sydney in Australia yeah and well that's like, because I guess we have an Australia uh, a naval base or, or something in Sydney I, mean, I think it's the because hell? they were looking for new shows for the fall since they have no new shows yeah the, 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 I, I guess they found something in Australia to because they probably weren't on strike in Australia. There is, there is a logistics base we have in Australia for Antarctica. Hmm. That might be the most boring <laughs> show I've ever seen. Is there a lot of murder in Antarctica? <laughs> uh, do they have coats? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's first episode. A little more advanced than Worsley expedition. First first episode. This guy died in Antarctica. He didn't have a coat. Yeah, but there's a sword in him. No, no, he didn't have a coat. He froze to death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think he froze to death and fell on the sword. There's a lot of swords in Antarctica, if you didn't know. <laughs> They're just everywhere. It's kind of dangerous. And apparently a pyramid. Now you can see that all the snow's melting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> um, the aliens other, are the fine. The other show that I was thinking of uh, that I can't believe is still on the air is Golden Bachelor. <laughs> it just started last week. Yep. <laughs> Um, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, he is awful. He is awful as a host. I disagree. I'm not a big Jimmy Fallon fan. I, I, there's none of the late night talk shows that I'm real fond of. But Conan. None of them are. He I mean, doesn't have one. I know. Uh, I think of all of them, like, and I don't watch any of them. It's usually just like you see like like a clip or like an interview or a skit mm-hmm. that he does. I think he has like the most entertaining like snippets s- things that he does like with guests like some of the games that they play are the best I guess like I don't know like if you're looking for something other than just the celebrity coming out and talking about their next what's project coming up? yeah uh, which they can't talk about <laughs> <laughs> right well, oh yeah they're still on strike the actors yeah yes uh, Blake the writers can talk about their next projects I guess Blake what you got. 
uh, from Professor Number One and Doctor Number One, who has a better chance of making the playoffs this year? The Browns or the Bengals? Browns. Bengals. Bra- Browns have an easier schedule. They play the worst teams from last year in the division where the Bengals are playing the best teams. Fix. It's part so, of the script. So, I mean, yeah, the Bengals have to play Kansas City and uh, Buffalo and... San Fran. And where... They do play Arizona this week. Tough game. Oh, yeah. Tough game. So we play two different teams in Yale. And that's the difference on yeah. why they have a better chance. Three different, but uh, the South... AFC South sucks, so doesn't make any difference. They look though. good against the Ravens. You know, we're gonna, you know, we'll find a way to fuck it up. I love how I mean, Blake's optimism dies each week. Each week he gets less and less optimistic. <laughs> Preseason, they look good. We got this. We got this. Week one, hey, yeah, we're looking good. We beat the Bengals. Yeah, we're looking good. Every other week since then, <sighs> Steelers, man. <laughs> Steelers lost to Texans this weekend, and then they come back and look good. And then they put up another stinker. But then, of course, they didn't have the quarterback starting. So, oh. uh, Okay, number six, bad idea segment. The highlight of the show, oh, where the hosts come up with the, some outrageous and hilariously bad ideas related to movies, pop culture, or current events. I've got a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, bad idea. Getting AI to write an outline for our show <laughs> and not having a top five list in it. It did not have a top five list in it. Did you, did did when you generated this? Mm. Did you include that we? I did not. Five. Brad Brad did this all. Uh, so this this is all. No, that's not Brad. Yeah, it's not Brad. I think this is all just part of a sabotage from Brad. The song. Listen up, y'all. It's a sabotage. That's the, close. That's close to the original. The the problem with AI is that you have to put in your inputs as if it's stupid, right? As in it's really dumb. Because I've tried to use some of the uh, generations for like you know for for art for D&D for stuff. art for D and D, and I'll try like thirty, forty different combinations before I get kicked off for the evening. It says <laughs> you've you've tried too many. <laughs> <laughs> you you used up all your free tokens within 24 hours and it was like and it, it is almost crazy well when it comes to interesting concepts you almost have to try and put in as bland and simple non nuanced uh very yeah, the, it's the a pain in the ass man. thing i noticed well a yeah. uh, you know it's about a year ago or so i started trying to like generate my D characters yeah. of pictures from of or whatnot i've noticed in the past year it's gotten much better with hands oh it's not the <laughs> rob layfield it, it well the, the hands do that pocket the hands used to come anywhere between three and eight fingers <laughs> sometimes multiple hands coming off the same arm That'd be kind I, of mean, cool. I, I saw a news article about that or sometimes yeah. the, the hands are purposely covered up on purpose yeah. because it can't but, do hands. but it, it's gotten hands much better i've noticed and uh it really still has a hard time drawing weapons. Like, if you want them to hold a sword or a bow or something, it can't. It just doesn't know how to show someone holding a, a, a bow and arrow. If your character was in Antarctica, it would be easier because it has lots of swords in the snow. Uh, but it would be harder because uh, I wouldn't have would. a coat. That's true. And just throwing a coat over something is easier than... <laughs> when He's coming up with Worsley faces. <laughs> <laughs> When Brian and I and Snoop Dogg play D and D, we do a lot of ge- AI generated. Actually, we're more old school. We do pen and paper. Or pen and paper. It's a little bit more old school. Snoop Dogg can really do a great story. A, a good doodle, though. I mean, when you're drawing your. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see what your uh, character looks like. Um, Lee Iacocca. Oh, okay. <laughs> looks like him. Um, bad idea. Uh, another one here is uh, number. 1,209. An 18-year-old has died in a shocking accident after sticking his head out through the sunroof of the car he was in and hitting a concrete beam inside a parking lot at the West Edmonton <gasps> Mall. Ouch. Oh! Don't do that. No. That's That's got to be painful. Ow! Oh. The teenager was traveling in a Toyota Camry in the parking lot at the West Edmonton Mall when the accident happened. Um, let's see here. Um... Officers were called to the car uh, with a welfare call and arrived with emergency medical services. He was rushed to the hospital but later died from his injury. So there you go. Uh, no one else was injured. 
Well, so that's that. outrageous and hilarious. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Yeah. Don't stick your head out. Is, is it really a current event? Yeah, September of 2023. Hmm. Within the past month. September 28th. Call current. So there you go. Uh, anything else? Bad ideas? Bad ideas? Um, what number is AI generating the outline, Jeff? Uh, 44. Well, I don't know if I go that. I mean, there's been a lot of bad ideas. I don't but... think your name's Jeff, Brian. I mean, I, I would think this might be in five-digit territory or something. Ooh. 301. That, that's only three digits. <laughs> what did you say? Five digits. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, 10,005. Okay. There you go. 10,005. I mean, in the general scheme of things, I yes. mean, it is a bad idea, but I don't think it's that terrible. That, like, not as bad as, say, getting your head knocked off. Uh, there you go. Or not wearing a coat. Yeah. Mm. That's subjective. <laughs> um, it's a bad idea. A glass hammer. Glass hammer is a bad idea. <laughs> what? <laughs> a glass hammer. A dog fitted with wheels. Why is that a bad idea? I don't know. It's in. I'm looking at bad ideas all night. So generated by AI. I mean, there's a lot of dogs right. that get dog wheels because wheels. they have bad legs and it helps them. I know so I think so. that's a good idea. So I have. Chat GPT open right now. Okay. Okay. And I asked it to generate a top five list oh. topic for a pop culture podcast. Oh. Okay. What did okay. it do? Number one, the top five iconic movie quotes of all time. Oh, okay. Oh, right We've right done this there. one before. Iconic movie. Let us in. Let us in. Quotes. Okay. What's number five? Where's rhubarb? What's not, what, <laughs> did they five. write the list? They didn't write them. They're, these are the. This would be like suggestions. Suggestions for that list. What the fuck? This show's over. The show's not over. We haven't done a top five list. We haven't done number seven yet. I'm giving us the top five, top five list. Top, top five. Okay. five. Top five. We each come up with one. Come up with an idea for an iconic movie quote. Okay. Is that what we're doing? Is iconic movie quotes? I am reading you the suggestions. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. (laughs) Number two, the top five iconic movie villains of all time. Done that. That was the very first top five. Yeah, we did that. Well, it wasn't necessarily movie villains. It was just villains. Villains. Uh, Number three, the top five iconic movie soundtracks of all time. It likes the words iconic movie. And we've done soundtracks. We have done soundtracks. Yeah, I think twice. Keep going, GPT. Uh, Iconic <laughs> movie? Well, no. Oh, okay. So. Uh, Iconic scenes of all movies. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Iconic oh. movie poster colors. Uh, so Iconic it's, movie <laughs> characters. It, so it, the next. Iconic podcast. The it, next three that I've asked for, it's just, it keeps it, giving me the, the, <laughs> the same s- one movie soundtrack. <laughs> Iconic movie soundtracks. Done. Crow. We did it. The Crow. All right. Oh, I thought uh, you were talking about number four. the Crow from Mystery Science Theater. Oh. Number crow. four. The top five must-watch movies mm-hmm. of the 21st century. Done that. Watch of 21st century. I'm writing them down. Uh, it's still now. It's going back to soundtrack. <laughs> It really wants to know the soundtrack. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nope, top five. You know when people worry about the AI, hey Blake, when people worry about AI taking over the world, don't worry, it won't. It's going to fuck it up just like yeah. humans do. There are examples of where we're still safe. The Matrix, yes. except for when it wants to play a game. We know that ends in thermonuclear global. <laughs> that was on last night. War, War games. Yeah. It was on last night. Would you like to play a game? Hello. Okay, Hello. so those are your top five. Is, is, that, is that your oh. iconic movie quote? Would you like to play a yeah, game? Yeah, that's mine. What's yours? Um, ooh, what is mine? Um, Blake, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yo, Adrian. That's mine. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I would have to say that the, the best cameo this so far is, of course, uh, Ferris Bueller. Um, Jeffrey Jones. No, Ferris Bueller's Matthew now. Broderick. Matthew Broderick. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> the best, you know, with him in Only Murders in the Building. 
Okay. Ah, yeah, you know, was, so he, you know, his scenes in there are pretty funny, and you know, the, even it's even better when he talks about, yeah, well, you know, I learned coding for war games, and then I <laughs> all this other stuff, and he and he calls up a former director of, uh, oh yeah, Mel Brooks. Hey, you know, when he had Matthew Broderick in for the producers, he's like, wait a minute, you didn't let him give yeah, you, you any suggestions, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, well, I did. I let him make these. You're, you're fucked. See <laughs> you later. So is that your quote? Yes, you're fucked. Uh, number two? <laughs> number two. Uh, movie quote? Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, pain heals. Chicks dig scars. Glory lasts forever. Number one, I'll take it. You ready? Yeah, let's go for it. I don't want your life. <laughs> I agree. I thought number everybody one. just want to watch the world burn. Oh, some people just want to watch the world burn. You can hobie it. Yeah, I hobied it. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm Remy the Crime. Would you like a big hole? From her famous bagels. It, it was croissants. I would like fried. a croissant. I am Remy LaCroix. From her famous one, Remy Takes France. <laughs> uh, finally, number seven, closing thoughts. The hosts wrap up the episode sharing any final thoughts, recommendations, or upcoming events. Uh, we do. October 19th through the 22nd, 2024, Cincinnati Comic Expo goes to Sharonville. Uh, see us here. <laughs> Road <laughs> trip! <laughs> sounds like a bad movie concept. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's have AI write that. Oh. The plot. The, the plot. plot. To the Cincinnati Comic Expo goes to Sharonville. I like let's, this. Let's get a movie write, plot for um, it. Hang on. <laughs> write a short story. Uh, before, before we get to, while well, he's doing that, yes. titles for the show. I got, uh, you got suits. Oh, I didn't have many titles this time. Um, the other one was... Um, Let's have AI generated. <laughs> oh, good point. I liked the cream by itself. Wow. And you're, you're, you'll let that? The I liked <laughs> the cream by itself. A story of the Cincinnati Comic Expo. What is it? Goes... To Sharonville. To Sharonville. I had witty is subjective. Okay. And why are you spitting vomit at me? Uh, that's all I have. I like the witty is subjective. That makes you think. Think. And that's what we do here. We do. We are a history podcast. And witty is subjective. Blake told us about the whole history of Alaska on an episode. Uh, Brian, got anything? Um, I didn't get to finish um, what I was writing down. The one so title. The one that I wrote down. It says, what is there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> what is there isn't? What is there isn't isn't something but i don't know no, what witty is subjective it is <laughs> uh what is the finally before we leave what's yeah. the ti- what's the subject uh, or the gonna, story are you going to ask uh, ai what we should name the i don't uh, want to get ai on my all thing. right jesus oh, christ <laughs> oh man okay this is, it, is this is, is it not long? a short story <laughs> at all okay Did never mind forget for it is one two three, no we can't do four, that four five six seven eight nine ten paragraphs well we'll have to share it and we'll read it in our sp- spare time or maybe t- next week on the show uh the title is the cincinnati comic expo ventures into sharonville <laughs> once a year the cincinnati comic expo gathered comic book enthusiasts cosplayers and fans from across the region this year, however, there was an unexpected <laughs> twist. <laughs> the organizers decided to take the expo to the charming town of Sharonville, <laughs> adding a unique flavor to the event. It is a unique flavor. It's boysenberry. It's always boysenberry. <laughs> boysenberry. As the sun dipped below the horizon, <laughs> casting an orange glow over the <laughs> over the quaint streets of Sharonville. <laughs> The convention center came to life. A giant banner adorned with superheroes greeted attendees at the entrance, announcing the exciting fusion of pop culture and small town charm. (laughs) Inside, I'm sold on this. Inside, the expo buzzed with energy. Artists displayed their intricate illustrations, capturing the essence of beloved characters. Cosplayers roamed the aisles, transforming into living embodiments of their favorite heroes and villains. This be- if they say small town charm one more time. <laughs> In a corner, a passionate panel of comic creators discuss the art of storytelling. Their words wove a tapestry of imagination, inspiring both budding and established artists. They also talk about how they lost their jobs to an AI machine. <laughs> Families strolled hand in hand, sharing smiles and laughter. 
Children's faces lit up as they met their fair, favorite characters in the flesh. Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, and Darth Vader graciously posed for countless photos. They did. Food trucks lined the outskirts, offering a variety. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got food trucks? Oh, that's new. Actually, no, it isn't. There's food trucks inside the building. Damn it. Food trucks lined the outskirts, <laughs> offering a variety of treats from gourmet hot dogs to exotic ice cream flavors. Like boysenberry. The aromas mingled with the scent of fresh ink from the artist alley, creating a sensory tapestry of on its Okay, own. that's enough it of that. Was, there's sensory there's, tapestry. I like there's it. There's a lot of description, but there's no plot yet. <laughs> as, the, <laughs> as the day waned, the main stage lit up for a cosplay contest. Yep. We've all been part of that. <laughs> Enthusiasts paraded in breathtaking out- outfits, each one a testament to their dedication and creativity. The crowd cheered, appreciating the artistry and effort that went into every detail. Outside the convention center, the streets of Sharonville played host to impromptu gatherings. Local businesses... <laughs> Gang fights! <laughs> local businesses joined the festivities, offering special discounts to expo attendees. When you're a DC man, you're a DC man. When you're Marvel, you're Marvel all the way. Hey! What do you got over there, Marvel boy? We got Spider-Man! <laughs> We got Superman. We got Wolverine. We got Wonder Woman, her lasso of truth. Yay! I really like Batman. The merging of the Cincinnati (laughs) Comic Expo and Sharonville proved to be a match made in pop culture heaven. The town's warmth and hospitality. Oh my god, the fucking warmth and hospitality. Provided a backdrop that enhanced the experience for fans and creators alike. Glad we weren't going to read the whole thing. Yeah, we need to share this with Andrew. As the weekend concluded, attendees departed with cherished memories and now new friendships. And the enemies. Cincinnati Comic Expo's venture into Sharonville <laughs> had not only celebrated pop culture, but had also woven a vibrant tapestry of community, <laughs> leaving a lasting mark <laughs> on both the town and the hearts of those who attended. That is the worst. <laughs> there is no plot. It, I Don't just, worry, Hollywood writers, you're fine. But I, I've got more options for titles. Yes. I, I will tell you, small though. Small Town Charm. There you go. That's or it. Or Vibrant Tapestry of Community. I like Small Town Charm. Um, the Over good news is subjective? we just got a word that Michael Bay just bought the rights to that story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then he's going to blow it off. Well, <laughs> Jeff. I got Batman. <laughs> yes, I do. What do you got, Jeff? Marvel Boy. I've got Iron Man. I've got <laughs> Captain America. They get together as the Avengers and save the world. I got far, f- Arm Fall Off Boy. Yes, I do. I got Blue Beetle. I got films that can't make $100 million. <laughs> I've got the MCU. I got DCEU. DCU? <laughs> Elseworld? What the fuck do we have over here? <laughs> I've got a Captain Marvel. <laughs> We've got a Captain Marvel. Hey! <laughs> Not much anymore. <laughs> yeah, you had to name it to Shazam. We have the rock! Oh. <laughs> Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. From walking dead to talking heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history not so bad, there's the history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobby.